and we're recording again and no one will ever know the secret content that you only get live on stream yeah we got secrets here you know, we should make an ending card for our our YouTubes. Yeah. Where we do things like that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> no. I have plenty of friends. Hey, wait. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sit in silence. Okay. Here I am editing my things so that I can have exclamation points. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I don't know why exclamation points felt so imperative, but they did. They're important. I have to convey the feeling. Yeah. I'm very excited for Jade. I love her. She. Yeah. I am so interested in these extra things. Yeah, the, extra. the the alt roots and the bonus uh, achievements are fun. Um, yeah. I might pick my favorite bad ends that we don't get and go back and do them at some point. Okay. Mm. Because there are some pretty fucking fun bad ends. <laughs> Excited. Like, oh, I'm not going to say the one because we didn't get it and that'd be spoilers. And then it wouldn't be fun when we did the thing. Mm. Yeah, I would love to just go back and get bad ends. Because we missed some bad ends for, uh, for Hive Swap, too. Yeah. Not Hive Swap, uh, Friend Sim. Friend Sim. And also for Hive Swap, there were some, mm. like... There's like a true ending. I saw some people talking about it in the comments of the of the VOD. Yeah. We apparently locked ourselves out of the true ending. Dang. Yeah. So we might have to play through that again. Yeah, a true ending hive slot. Yeah. From the top. Penis. Music? Falls even. <laughs> <laughs> the two roots you can take. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice. Good shit. I have hmm. lots of friends. Yeah. I can count them on my fingers. You are learning more about yourself every day. For example, while you are, uh, while you already knew that friendship was everything, you are now realizing that staying with your friends is not a priority. At least, that must be right, because you keep leaving friends and starting over again. Why are you doing this? Probably a deep-held value of some kind. That makes sense. Anyway, you're ready to meet new, uh, more friends. And the only place you've seen new people recently has been on Jade's Dream Planet. You zap on over there. This time, something is different. It seems to be a different part of the day than before, and the, am uh, the overhead clouds that previously served as fluffy ambient backdrop are now alive with images. This song bops! Hell yeah. <laughs> like this ghost. <laughs> uh, meteors striking a dark world. A planet covered in sugar mountains dotted with goofy giant teapots. A young gray-skinned alien girl running around catching frogs. Uh, these must be the clouds Jade was referencing, the ones she said could never be wrong. Well, you can take guidance from them too. You've trusted more dubious things than clouds. You zone in on that frog girl with the short haircut and the red skirt. Time for the zappy thing. It's always night on Troll Planet, at least when folks are out and about, but it's not usually this dark. You confidently head, at, head out to start exploring your surroundings and immediately run into a wall face first. 
Okay, okay. You're getting your bearings now. You've ended up in some kind of closet. You refrain from making a hackneyed joke about it. They probably don't even have that cultural metaphor here. And the noise you made elicited an answering yelp of surprise in the room outside. You hear footsteps approaching you, and then someone yanks the door open. Hello. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Uh. Opening the door has allowed a beam of bright sunlight to fall across your face. You feel instinctively that the light is something to avoid. You hold your, uh, your hands up to shield your face, then remember that your hands are also made of skin and whimper. The heat is doing its best to fry you, like a vampire in a movie. You are sure that, uh, you are sure that idle thought will not end up having any re uh, relevance to the tr this troll girl's story whatsoever. What are you? Did you just wander in here, or like... What? Something like that, you tell her, cringing away from the light. You get the feeling this girl is not gonna fall for the old mailman gambit. Male troll? You tell her you know one of her other friends. It's a familiar fit. Yeah. Who? Wait. Is it Carcat? Yes. I knew it. He makes friends of all kinds. Well, I obviously can't kick you out right now. You don't seem to be able to handle the sun. So I guess you better stick around until at least nighttime. You could easily zap to nighttime, but this is giving you an in, so instead you agree. No problem, you can just <laughs> hang out in this closet. It's fine. It's a lovely closet. I know we just met, but... You're being kind of weird. You hope it's the kind of weird that eventually becomes charming. You don't say that, just think- uh, you don't say that though, just think it. You know the barrier between your words and thoughts is ambiguous at best, but for <laughs> real. Anyway, you have no obligation to skulk around in my wardrobe-ifying assets chamber. I have a solution. Pulling the shades, maybe? No. Why would I deprive my plants of life-giving sunlight for a fragile-skinned creature I've never met before? It is another solution. A minute later, you are dressed in a floor-length gown of emerald velvet with long sleeves, a high neckline, and a dramatic hood to pull over your head. The dress does nothing for the heat, but it effectively shields you from sunlight. There you go. All swaddled up like a baby, you joke. The troll just gives you a level look. Clearly, you've stumbled on a cultural misalignment. Even though fuck she's the baby, yeah, the f <laughs> baby. Excuse me. Ah, uh, even though she's the one who hasn't even heard of a baby, she stares at you until you start to feel embarrassed for knowing things that she doesn't know. <laughs> she is very good at staring contests. What an amazing potential friend. Now out of the closet. You know now that that joke won't land either. Uh, you look around the room. It is indeed covered with plants, as well as colorful bolts of fabric and half-finished sewing projects. Unlike Rose's knitting disarray, it does not give the impression of someone who has difficulty finishing things. This troll's room gives the impression of someone who enjoys, even excels, at having multiple irons in hot places. Or at least she thinks she does. She seems to have just been on her computer thing when you zapped in, because her chat client is flashing insistently. You try to peer at the open window, but she hits a button and makes the projection disappear, a delicate green flush rising to her cheeks. <laughs> no need to look at that, nosy. <laughs> <laughs> Guiltily. Well, that's what I'm good at. Yeah, how else are you supposed to get lore about you? Fucking talk? <laughs> What, you want me to have a fucking conversation? Ew. Weird. Disgusting. Uh, guiltily, you remember spying on Rose. When she called you out, you thought for a second that your chances of being her friend had run out. Like if there was a universe where you became uh, her friend and one where you didn't, you'd stumbled clumsily into the wrong one, the bad one, if you will. 
but luckily everything turned out fine. Maybe you could get away with it again? Plus, this troll doesn't even know about your powers yet, not like Rose did. She would have no reason to suspect you. We're plotting against her. That seems wrong! <laughs> I don't want to. Don't want to snoop? No, we might bad end for her, but I want to try to be, do the right thing at first, at least. Alright, let's not cheat with Brenda. Yeah. No. Even if you don't get caught, it's just not a good way to begin a friendship. Much fairer to start on even footing. Besides, you already have an in. You ask the troll how she knows Carcat. She looks bored by this conversation starter. <laughs> Sorry, boss. I was actually kind of busy with you. I'm not going to co consign you to fiery death outside in the light, but... I would appreciate some personal time. Sure, you say? Of course. The troll gives you a suspicious look until you turn away enough that she can be assured of privacy. She goes right back to chatting with her friends. After a while, she gets up and starts working on a dress she's sewing. She keeps getting frustrated, ripping it out and redoing it to get it perfect. She's not being rude to you, but she's ignoring you. You attempt to engage a few more times, and she keeps answering politely, but she just refuses to be pulled into shenanigans from which a lasting friendship could form. After several hours, the sun slips below the horizon and leaves the world in twilight. The troll girl yawns. Well, it should be safe for you to leave now. Goodbye. She nicely but firmly directs you out the door. Wow. Get the fuck out of really here! <laughs> Shoo -shoo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess we have to be a bad person to get a friend. Yeah, what? You think we can just make friends? <laughs> You've seen us interact with people, right? Yeah. We need we a little bit of a, a boost. Although they didn't do her stripes on her horns for the sprite. How dare they? Oh. But, yeah, let's spy, I guess. Ugh. You excused yourself to the... You don't know what they call it here. The necessaries. You wave your hand in a vaguely embarrassed way, and the troll gets it. Out of her sight, you zap back to a few minutes ago, just outside the door to the room you're in now. You wait until you hear the thump of yourself arriving in the closet and the troll abandoning her desk. Then you quickly zap into the room and read her current chat. Like a weirdo. It just cannot escape my notice that the last three times you have contacted me, it was to ask if I finished your dress yet. Under these circumstances, I find it trying to believe that you want it for no, uh, for no particular reason. I wish you would just tell me why it's so important. Uh, kind of shit lord. <laughs> if you need an informed opinion on, like, what she sounds like, the next person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I believe the biggest meme is she's a massive fucking bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Just a huge uh, bitch. Uh. <laughs> I, was, I was going gremlin, gonna go gremlin at first, so I don't know. Uh, she's, uh. That's I a lighter shade of blue. Yeah, I would. I don't think it's spoiler necessarily, but like, she likes adventuring and piracy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't? And we have right. an extreme who gremlin like, who you might want to save yeah. the gremlin voice for. Yeah. Mm. If I even do that person. Yeah, if you do that person. But just like keep that in the back of your mind. Yeah. Uh Of course you do. Fuzzy things always have has to have a reason for everything. Maybe I just want a present for my Moy Rail. Did you think of that? I like that. Mm. I like Are that. You... <laughs> <laughs> Are you too busy fussing around in your fuss block? Yep. Yeah. yeah, you got it. Or maybe I'm being too nice. Or do you think I... <laughs> or did you not think I can be nice sometimes? I know you can be. You just choose not to. Yeah, <laughs> ever. <laughs> when you want. Sort of. Are we morals again now then? Yesterday you said divining our relationship was something only lame dorks would do. Yeah, and my morals a super lame dork. <laughs> That's you, fang face. It's just 
noticed, but I can't help but notice that I'm your Moira again right now. You want something from me. You notice a lot, don't you? Always noticing something. I bet you would be shocked to know how much you don't see. You don't even know half of what I have going on. I'm glad that Resto's like quirk is so readable. Yeah. <laughs> If I have ever pretended to know what is going on with you, please allow me to apologize. <laughs> for my reality. Oh, whatever. Can't you just tell me if it's finished yet? Hello? Kanaya? The log ends there. You zap back before past you is done changing into the dress and re-enter the room. The troll Kanaya, uh... The troll, Kanaya, is back at her lunchbox computer, typing furiously. Cute sprite. Yeah. You have to handle this situation delicately. She can't know you are spying on her. Since you've already said that you know Carcat, you hedge your bets on all of them sharing the same friend group. You ask her carefully if she happens to know your other friend as well. Arachnid's Grip? The little green flesh darkens, uh, darkens Kanaya's cheeks again. She bites her lip, showing one kind of adorable fang. Yes. I know her. Why? You are sure that helping Kanaya figure out her situation with this girl is the key to earning her friendship. A big, juicy interpersonal conflict to solve has been dangled in front of you, and nothing makes friends more reliably. But then again, you don't really know anything about this other troll. You don't even know her name, just her handle. Can you really be of use to Kanaya? Especially when your knowledge of the girl is based on a foundation of lies? Is this the right way to go? <sighs> Man! <laughs> what? a good person is so hard in this game? We want to stick <laughs> our fucking nose in, in, in the inner business? If we don't, he's gonna think we're boring again, right? Hmm. Alright, let's offer to help, I guess. Ah. Yeah. You gesture wildly. Oh, you know God. this. <laughs> <laughs> you know this girl, whose name you do totally know. Uh, you and this girl, whose name you do totally know, go way back. In fact, if Kanaya wants some help figuring things out with her, you could definitely help. You're an observant person. This part is true, and you want to help her. This too! Kanaya thinks this over, looking skeptical. What could you do to help? She's just impossible. <laughs> Everyone knows that already. I'm not, I am not breaking the ground about Riska here. Riska, that must be her name. Despite Kanaya's outward frustration, you keep sensing some kind of guilty affection here. You don't know what a moirail is. How could you? You've never heard that word before, but it conjures a feeling inside you. A vague sense of warmth and comfort, and for some reason, a dark room and the smell of popcorn. Aww. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's clearly some kind of intimate relationship, and Kanaya's feelings are all wrapped up in it. You know, uh, you know what to do in that kind of situation. She needs to tell Vriska how she feels. This will go well. You expect Kanaya to brush this off. She hasn't exactly been Miss Emotional Openness so far. And she looks like she's about to, but then she wavers. To your surprise, she lets out a heavy sigh, her shoulders slumping. What would be She's not even into the relationship we have now. There's no way she'd want to take it in more. Take it in a more... crimson direction. I'm gonna turn the... game volume down just a tad. Hey. Clearly these feelings have worn her down so much, her spiky defenses are weakened. You don't want to cheer on someone's vulnerabilities, but, well, it's hard to forge a friendship without them. You ask if she's sure about that. Well... No. I can't ever tell if she's sincere. She makes serious things into jokes and jokes into big dramas. 
And that she started calling me her Moira on the joke. But she told everyone else about it too. She didn't even ask me what I wanted. And now I don't know how to talk to her about it. Every conversation we have gets so antagonistic. But I'm not interested in that quadrant with her. Sometimes it feels like our relationship is just an aggregation of shallow and insincere hostilities. Despite the unfamiliar alien words, this teen romantic flailing is common among all species. You nod sympathetically, but you point out Kanai isn't happy now, so what would she have to lose if she pressed the issue? Kanaya gives you that even, scathing gaze again. And what is your personal interest in my quadrants? I love her faces. Yeah. Carpot's friend. We're nosy. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops, you pushed it too far. All your recent successes have made you cocky. You revert to barefaced honesty and tell her you want to get to know her better. I have plenty of friends already. Eleven of them. Yeah. I don't even like some of them. Oh. <laughs> Are you sure you should call them your friends? But I will think about your unsolicited and unwelcome advice. Cool. Advice from a stranger whose presence you are tolerating solely to not be responsible for the death of an innocent is well known to be the best kind of advice. <laughs> That's about the best you can ask for. You shut up and sit quietly while Kanaya goes back to her activities, sewing and tending to her plants with a big chainsaw she seems to have pulled out of nowhere. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Finally, she huffs a sigh and throws the chainsaw down on the floor. It, deers, uh, it disappears again, but a little gold tube rolls away from where it landed. Kanaya stalks back to her magic computer lunchbox. She is emanating such a determined air that you don't dare to address her. Maybe she's forgotten about you. If so, it's to your advantage, because Kanaya's setup projects her windows in a very visible way. And she didn't tell you not to look this time. <laughs> you know how you basically refuse to be straightforward with me? You know how you... And I use this metaphor with full consciousness of its on-the-nose nature, always weave a web of intricate emotional misdirection, and basically act in the most infuriating way possible? <laughs> what? Slow down, what are you talking about? I forgot the voice what? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you start calling me your Moira? Was it because you actually had those feelings for me? Or did it suit your purposes somehow? What if I started calling you my mate spirit? Would that make it reality? Is that how it works? You just say things and assume they will happen, like you said, instead of talking about it with the other person involved? That time I won't... That time I met you in an abstract and general sense, not specifically you. Wait, are you saying you want to be mate spritz? You know I'm one of the few who still likes you. You know everyone wonders why I still talk to you at all, and sometimes I do too, after everything you've done. I think in this situation the evidence for strong concupiscent feelings on my part is compelling. I do not think our so-called moral allegiance is satisfying enough to account for my continued attachment to you. Any outside observer could perceive as much. Wow. I think there was a confession somewhere buried under all that insulting language. You know what, meanie fangs? Let's do it. Let's be mates, Brits. Do not mock me. I'm not! Jeez. Did you see how unfair you're being? Vriska, be more straightforward. Vriska, talk clearly about your feelings. To find our relationship, then when I do it, this is what I get. Let's flip red, why not? Wait, really? Yes! Oh! <laughs> Aww. Oh, that's a cute spray. Yeah. Kanaya slams the lunchbox, uh, the lunchbox shut and turns to you. She's even more flustered than she was before, and you can't tell if she's freaked out or thrilled. Maybe even she doesn't know. Hi guys, motherfucker. Yeah! <laughs> Vrisnaya. <Listen. laughs> I have to go somewhere. You can let yourself out, right? Do not steal anything from me. You open your mouth, about to suggest that you could teleport her where she needs to go, but she rushes past you and down the stairs. Then she's gone. Dang. 
You've been getting really, uh, you've been getting really good mileage lately out of being the person to unite distant friends. Well, it's a goddamn stupid independent action. You get the feeling following her wouldn't go over well either. Kanaya probably needs some privacy right now. A lesser friendship aspirant might give up at this point, but your unique skills have honed in on one thing. This relationship is happening because of your advice. Surely once things settle down, Kanaya will remember this and turn to you, ready to embrace you and rain down thanks and praise for your good works. You're not about to wait around for it here. You zap ahead a couple of days. No Kanaya. Nothing in the room indicates that Kanaya has even been back here yet. Uh. You try a couple days more. Still no Kanaya. You zap again. Now you're a week out, and the brown edges on some of the leaves suggest that Kanaya has been at her new girlfriend's house this entire time. You're about to give up when you hear a door slam downstairs. Kanaya storms up the winding staircase, stopping dead when she sees you. Oh great, just what I need. Someone I don't know here in a delicate emotional time to witness my compromised state. Hi, nice to see you too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we Whenever waited. I'm... Yeah, we totally waited. Whenever I'm <laughs> on the precipice of a romantic disaster, I always think to myself, I wish a deformed stranger was in my house refusing to leave. Just to bear witness to my inelegant suffering. Okay, wow, that was harsh. You're beginning to think your strategy is not going to pan out. Never one to be deterred easily, you cautiously ask her if she wants to talk about it. She puts her face in her hands. You know what? You are probably the only person who thought this was remotely a good idea. And therefore, the pro probably the only one I can complain to. Everyone else saw this coming, I'm sure. As outcomes as this one were, was not, ah, as outcomes go, this one was not particularly stealthy. When she looks up, she doesn't look angry anymore. Just upset. Oh no. She's angry to me. Yeah. I do not know why I thought that in becoming my mate's spirit, she would somehow start acting differently than the way she always has. Relationships are hard. Relationships are hard and nobody understands. Well, no. I mean... They are a very common form of social interaction. I think most people, especially past the age when their genetic con contribution is legally required, understand. Or face certain culling. Okay, never mind that. You were trying to do a thing and it clearly didn't work, so things didn't work out with Riska. You could say that. At first, it was everything I wanted. She's right, you know. She can be nice sometimes. And then she just started ordering me around. Like I had to do what she said just because I was her mate spirit. Like maybe the reason she agreed in the first place was because she wanted that leverage. You know she's upset, but she isn't getting visibly emotional. Instead, as she talks, her eyes narrow and her voice grows icy with anger. She grows very still, her muscles held taut. And she kept trying to use me to get back in with our friends who sensibly dropped her already. Like Carcat and Terezi. Although I can, can't believe I still have any cash with them after I so obviously, after so obviously taking leave of my senses enough to date her. Even Terezi wasn't stupid enough for that. It felt like she just wanted me to like her so she could exploit me. Maybe because she doesn't have any enough other friends. So she had to get the most out of me. Her voice is trembling with anger now. Geez, that's rough. Honestly, it sounds to you like Kanaya dodged a bullet. When you first saw that Kanaya had a crush on this girl, you kind of assumed that someone as composed and rational as Kanaya would be drawn to someone who would compliment her well. But you've just watched her walk into a train wreck. Well, encouraged her to. It's probably good she broke up with Riska. I didn't. Oh. 
Well. But you're right. Oh. She stalks <laughs> over to her husk top and throws the top open so violently it nearly breaks. She opens a window and starts typing. Her claws hit the key so hard that one of them pops off and flies to the ground. You know, Briska, I didn't just want to date you. I wanted you to feel the same things I felt and treat me like a mate sprit. And whatever this is, it isn't what I wanted. My dogs are being so loud. Oh no. Woof. <laughs> <laughs> woof, woof. Yeah, man. Bark. Your. Bark, woof. Bark. <laughs> Arf. <laughs> Boof, woof, boof. <laughs> that that's gonna be our next April Fool's stream. <laughs> we just bark the whole time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Furry stream. <laughs> <laughs> We're furries now. <laughs> Furry it's, YouTubers. It's just a picture of a dog. That's the whole stream. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. What are you saying? but Kanaya slams the screen down and turns away. Then she puts her hands over her face again and bursts into tears. You can't help but feel a little awkward. There, there. Kanaya glares at you. You know this is your fault, right? I do not think you have shown yourself to be competent enough in this area to try to fix things now. Can you please just leave me alone? Yeah, you're not going to be able to turn this around. Leaving probably is the best thing you can do for Kanaya now. You nod sadly and zap the fuck out of there. <laughs> you did <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, Sorry Kanaya. guys, Briss Naya is a bad ship. <laughs> Turns out. I It's sh it's shocking, it's I know. Almost <laughs> yeah, it's almost like... <laughs> It's almost like Risk is a horrible and selfish person. Who would have guessed? Um. Alright, let's back off. Yeah. Can I, uh, I trust you to make your own decisions. Mm. No reason, you say, just curious. Can I, uh, gives you a suspicious look. Okay. It's well. Fucking weird. I'm kind of in the middle of something. You can just while away the time until it gets dark. Sure. You watch her for a few minutes as she finishes up her conversation and then starts working on things around her room. But having seen what you've seen, you are determined to find some way to help her. <laughs> if you can't fi uh, fix her interpersonal problems, maybe you can figure out something else she'd enjoy. Filled with investigative spirit, you start to gather evidence. Snoop. You start to snoop. Spying got you this far. Spying is great. You rifle through Kanaya's bookshelf. She has a number of sewing pattern books, which you assume uh, must have some kind of whimsically gruesome twist congruent with the rest of the world building on this planet, but pretty much just look like sewing pattern books. There is one thing on the shelf in your own language. It's not a book, but a stack of printed out pages bound together in a distinctly homemade way. It says Spurb Beta Walkthrough at the top and is covered with familiar erudite prose. You're pretty sure the events described in this document never happened in the timeline you're currently making, but maybe whatever source Kanaya got from this is not bound strictly to one timeline. There are a number of books featuring shining white figures, mostly women, with prominent fangs and variously colored blood dripping from their cruel and elegant mouths. They are all dressed in an explosion of brightly colored fabrics. Something about their sparkles strikes you as deeply, strangely familiar. You must just be thinking of vampires. There's no reason you would know anything about whatever this rainbow, blood-imbibing troll equivalent is. Most of these covers feature a swooning troll of varying genders, clearly about to have their throat torn out sexily. Many of the <laughs> rainbow vampires are being menaced by brave heroes, all wielding chainsaws. A loud buzz makes you look up. 
You can't help but notice that Kanaya is tending to her topiaries with a large chainsaw of her own. Okay, okay, you're putting this all together. The bright colors around her house, the choice of weapon, the love of sunlight, Kanaya's heart's desire is clearly to date a sexy vampire. <laughs> Maybe that's what AG is. You wonder if you could make this happen for her. Maybe on this planet, it's not just a fantasy. Uh, you clear your throat to get Kanaya's attention, and then casually wonder aloud if Alternia has any kind of... non-living creatures. Oh. You mean the undead? Yes, yes, the undead. Where <laughs> might one find the undead? <laughs> It is not difficult. They tromp past my hive in their hordes every day. One of them's my friend. <laughs> Slavering and so on. <laughs> Trying to get in sometimes. It's all coming together. That must be the root of Kanaya's fascination. You start to form a plan. For the next few hours, you keep an eye trained on the window. Sure enough, within an hour, a group of straying, shambling creatures lurches into view. You yell and point out the window, drawing Kanaya's attention, and then zap yourself out there in front of the horde. We get eaten some better. Yeah. Now that you're close up, you can see that these guys are not exactly the debonair creatures of the night from Kanaya's book covers. They're more like zombies, big slow stumbling things, half of them falling apart. Still, needs must, you are going to net one of them for Kanaya. You stand your ground as they lurch towards you, trying to select the most alluring, the sexiest <laughs> zombie. The sexiest zombie! I mean, we joke, but there are people who want to fuck zombies. I mean, the, one of the player characters in Monster Prom is a, in Monster Prom in camp is a zombie, and he's hot! Yeah. What am I to say? Yeah. <laughs> They're hot, like... Uh, suddenly, can I... <laughs> oh hey! Ah oh, dang! Oh, hey. Thank you for the raid. Thanks. And thank you for the Whoa. follow, Mi Mishix 8 uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you walked 16. in at a time. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> so do you? <laughs> do <Yeah>. you? <laughs> thoughts, on, thoughts on I'm... sexy zombies chat. Yeah. yeah thoughts what? on sexy zombies. What do you think? What do you guys think about the zombie and monster pro monster prom in camp? <laughs> Depends on the zombie, yeah. Yeah. Accurate, yeah. valid, amazing content. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Thank Thanks you. Uh, oh, yeah. Six H Y S and Biangle Gaming for the for the follows. Thank Appreciate you for the follow. Much. Sexy zombies are good zombies. I agree with you profusely. Very true. <laughs> Suddenly, can I? More followers. Woo. Oh man. So many. Hergy, Thanks. thank you for the follow. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Zombie stuff on me. Oh, absolutely. Oh, uh, guys, I should make a. Uh, when I finish making our normal rigs, I'll make zombie rigs. Oh, uh, heck yeah. Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> or like Halloween rigs. Um, Duray Vertigo the also followed. Yeah, thank you, oh, Duray yeah. Vertigo. Yeah, thank you. Oh, you also like the monster from Frankie Girl? Yeah, she's cute. I love her. Girlfriend. <laughs> Man, we gotta play Monster Prom on stream sometime. Yeah, I yeah, have it's to. Been a we minute. can play that soon. Yeah. We, we were gonna play that, like, and then we just didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that we, happens a lot. That does it happen. Does. I think we were saving up for a buck around day. Yeah. I think so. Oh, well. We'll, we we'll play it on a buck around day, yeah. Yeah. So uh, suddenly, Kanaya's at your side, out of breath from running. She's wielding her chainsaw. Are you actually bereft of sense? Yes! Yeah, yeah. kinda. Alright, yeah, thank you, Biangle Gaming, for stopping in, all y'all. For thank coming you. by. Appreciate it muchly. Yes, yeah. Are we in a raid happening? That's yeah, never happened. It's literally my very first raid. Yeah. 
Uh, oh, my dog in the office stream yesterday. Someone told me that they tried to, but I had them off, so we might want to check and make sure that they're on. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Uh, you don't fight the undead. This is suicidal. You weren't trying to fight them, but there's no time to explain that because they attack you anyway. <laughs> a great monstrous arm backhands you to the ground, and monster claws tear through your gown and into your shoulder, lifting you by it. The creature opens a mouth full of more teeth than you thought could fit inside there. Then you're falling. You hit the ground and roll, dirt grinding into the wounds on your arm. Oh. The top half of the creature lands next to you, twitching slightly. Kanaya's chainsaw gleams with its black blood. She twirls and bisects another undead thing, but then a third bear hugs her from behind and lifts her, its maw opening wide. You scramble to your feet and throw yourself at Kanaya, grabbing her kicking leg and squeezing your eyes shut to concentrate. You zap. Please don't let the monster have come with you. You open your eyes. The monster did not come with you. Woo! Only its arms did. Yikes! Nice! <laughs> Kanaya shakes herself a little, free from their disembodied embrace. Blood pools on her carpet. She does something to get rid of her chainsaw, and suddenly she's holding a tube of lipstick, which she opens. She slicks a fresh coat of black onto her lips. You slowly catch your breath. You're about to offer an apology, but something makes you pause. Kanaya is staring at the pools of blood. She cau cautiously, guiltily, leans down and swipes a finger in the mess. Then she brings it to her mouth and delicately licks. <laughs> she makes a face and spits the blood out. Then she looks up at you, flushing emerald with embarrassment. Oh, you think you made a mistake. Kanaya doesn't want to date a vampire. She wants to be a vampire. Be the sexy vampire of your dreams. Chase your bliss, <laughs> Kanaya. <laughs> Pretend you did not see that. You smile cautiously. It's okay, you tell her. You're pretty embarrassed yourself by your foolish actions. Yes. Why did you do that? Also, how did you teleport? We will be coming back to that one, do not mistake me. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't understand why anyone would run straight into a horde of undead. We're not smart. Yeah. Why not both be and be a vampire? Yeah, why not, Kanaya? An excellent point. Yeah. Just two vampires holding hands. <laughs> oh, but then whose blood are you going to sexily drink from their neck? Because, you know, you have to, like, rip into their throat in a sexy way. Very true. That's imperative for a vampire. Polycule. Yeah, vampire polycule. <laughs> vampire polycule, one for- oh, I might draw that later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good idea. <laughs> and you can draw again! Hell yeah. And I can draw again! Yay! You look down. Well, it's just that when she said undead, you were picturing something else. Another kind of creature that was dead and now isn't, and is a little more... appealing. Understanding dawns. Oh. Also, a vampire polycule, where do I sign up? Just kidding, unless? <laughs> yeah, unless I'm the vampires in my polycule. <laughs> I'll post the Google form on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Please do that like Mario. I want to retweet that so badly. Absolutely. I will make a vampire polycule application sheet. <laughs> I see. Well, that's understandable. <laughs> Vampires are just so cool. They're so cool and hot, and it would make sense for anyone to want to be one. Mm -hmm. I don't know what a vampire is. <laughs> but I believe we are on the same page. Maybe I misjudged you. Perhaps you have greater intelligence and finer tastes than I originally inferred. Because you like vampires. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only yeah, thing we had to say. If you have, if you like vampires, your brain is so big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Huge even. 
Hell yeah, galaxy brain. <laughs> Maybe you say, and you bet anyone with taste would find Kanaya's daring, unconventional aesthetic intriguing. Even someone like the tentacle therapist. Oh, uh. My Twitter would be. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a at it. <laughs> moron moon mage, yeah. and it is linked down below. Yeah. yeah. We also have the uh, group Twitter, the Planetaria, where you can like see our streaming stuff, like whenever we stream, whenever we go live. Yeah. Did I retweet this? Did any of us retweet this stream onto that? Uh, nope. I oh, nice. I post. I'll do that now. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> you know, you know, an hour and a half in the fucking stream. Oh You're goodness. Done. We could probably fit like one more route or maybe two more routes in before we have to do Patreon movie night. <laughs> we're, almost, we're at least almost halfway. Like, at least halfway. Uh, we it. Giant brain, you were saying? <laughs> no, I mean your brain is at least as big as ours. Yeah. <laughs> the biggest brain is right here. I'm holding it. <laughs> no, put that back. <laughs> no, they're not the boss of me. It's it gotta be. Brain jar. It's gotta be plugged in to work, dummy. Plugged in. <laughs> you gotta plug the brain in. Plug? Yeah. Plug. Plug your Come on. In. This is a snack. Can I have freezes? Uh, how do you do? Did you just? I mean, who is that? I mean, um. She clears her throat uncomfortably. Whoever that is, I hope you are right. And also, well, she looks embarrassed again. Thank you for saying so. You nod, wondering if you should say more, but you should uh, keep that friend's secrets, just like you are going to keep Kanaya's vampire fantasies secret, because that's what friends do. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I love that. What a Bond beautiful start to a friendship. Hmm. Talking about your vampire game. Yeah, man. Just bro things. Yeah. Alright, it's uh, 520 now. Yeah. I oh, and thank you could... for the Twitter follow. Uh, 6HYS. Thank you. Oh yeah, thank right. you very much. I think we could probably do one more. Yeah. Uh, clowns in there. Ooh, get get some clowns. We got clowns. Yeah, Hong Kong baby. Hong Kong. <laughs> All right. Here, let me split the vod. <laughs>